Jammer, and welcome back to another Animal Crossing New Horizons video. I first want to say hello to all the new fans who got Animal Crossing over the holidays. I wanted to take this opportunity to have our community welcome all of you new fans to the game who are just barely started off on their deserted island getaway. And I thought this would be a great time to give you a bunch of beginner tips and stuff we wish we would have known when we first started off the game. So let's use the comment section of this video as a place to welcome all the new fans and help them out and put any tips you have for beginners in the comment section of this video. But before we get started, if you are new here, perhaps consider subscribing. Mr. YouTube here is telling me that only 16 and a half of you who watch my videos are subscribed. So why not? Subscribing's free, you can always change your mind later, and you could of course expect tons more on Animal Crossing New Horizons. Thank you so much for listening to all that. Without further ado, let's get started on some beginner tips. Choosing the right map. When you first start the game, when you're talking to Timmy and Tommy at the counter, you're offered a bunch of different map layouts and such, and it can be a little overwhelming because you're like, well, I don't really know what I want my town to look like, and there's really only a couple of factors that actually matter when you're selecting your island. Because later in the game, as you've seen in probably trailers and stuff, you get options to terraform where you can change the layout of your town, change the rivers and stuff, change the variation in the terrain. So there's a lot in your town that you can customize. However, there's a selection of three things that can never be moved. The first is the location of your Dodo Airlines, where your plane and where your hub for multiplayer is, your resident services, which will be marked with the big leaf icon. This is kind of like your town hall area and will be like the center hub square of your island. And the last thing are the mouths to your rivers. The connections points from your river going into the ocean, those cannot be moved. You of course can delete the river in front of it, but there will always be an entrance going out from your river to your ocean at those locations. Get your daily DIYs. There are a ton of DIYs in Animal Crossing New Horizons, offering a wide variety of different customization and other furniture stuff you can make. Especially when you're first starting off, it's really important to make sure you continue to collect your daily DIYs so you can grow and expand your catalog. There will be a message in a bottle on the beach that you can collect once per day where you can get a DIY. In addition to that, you'll often, every once in a while, have a villager crafting in their house, so it's always worth checking in each of your villagers' homes to see if you have a villager crafting. Building off of that, when you have a friend visit your island or if you're visiting another friend's island, it's nearly guaranteed that one of the villagers in the town will be crafting a new DIY, so it's always worth checking that out when playing multiplayer. Beyond that, there are the floating balloons, which can give a wide variety of rewards, whether it be crafting materials, new furniture items, but also, on the rare chance, new DIYs. So it's always good to keep an eye out for balloons in the sky and shoot them down just in case you can get yourself a new DIY. The Harvesting Rock Trick Early in the game, it's required that you get a bunch of iron ore, so then you can actually build yourself Nook's Cranny, the local shop that'll be on the island. In order to get stone as well as iron ore, you'll collect that material from rocks. The way to do that is, of course, to hit it either with your shovel or an axe, and as you do that, your little villager will bounce back and materials will come from it. However, there's a specific time limit on how many times you can hit the rock in a row since your first hit, so that's why it's important to be as close as possible to the rock and not fall too far away, otherwise you'll miss out on potentially getting more materials from the rock than you could otherwise. Your best bet is to make sure all the tiles around the rock in a 3x3 area are all clear and open, therefore, you know, all the materials can actually fall on the ground. Then what you can do is on one of the corners of the rock, you'll dig two holes, whether up or down, or left or right of you, essentially creating a little corner that your villager can't pass through. As you hit the rock while sitting in this corner, it'll actually keep your player in place, therefore you won't like fall away or have to run back to the rock, and it'll guarantee that you make sure you get all eight materials from a single rock. How to unlock the ladder, terraforming, and paths. These are a lot of questions that people have when they first start off the game. There's a lot of stuff that you don't have yet and you're waiting to unlock. And honestly, my best advice to you is just keep talking to Tom Nook. Each day, he'll tell you what you need to do to continue progress in the game. And eventually, as you continue along in the progress, in the storyline of talking with Tom Nook, you'll unlock all of these things. You'll quite quickly get a ladder. And as far as terraforming and paths, it does happen at the end of Tom Nook's campaign of stuff. But without time traveling, you'll get it in roughly two weeks. There's no cheat or easy way to get it. You just gotta play through the game, keep talking to Tom Nook, and each day he'll keep you on track to make sure you're doing everything correctly. Just keep asking him, what should I do? He's your best resource to keep making progress to make sure you unlock these other features later on. How to make lots and lots of bells. I'm not going to go over a bunch of different money making strategies because we actually already did that. I made a video a long time ago talking about how to make millions upon millions of bells. That video does a great job explaining a bunch of different methods to make money. But more than just that, it also gives a lot of examples of different kind of ways to make money as you continue to progress through the game and unlock more stuff. 
It explains the shiny money spot, it explains the money rock, and also gives a great breakdown on how to best sell your turnips. I realize this is a self plug, but I highly recommend all beginners to check out that video. It does a great job explaining a ton of different tips to making a lot of bells here in this game. Donations to the museum. As you collect your bugs, fish, and fossils, you have the optional choice, of course, to complete your museum by donating one of every single critter in the game to blathers to be displayed in their exhibits. And there's two really useful methods of keeping track of which bugs and fish you've already donated. For one thing, the first of every bug and fish you collect, there will be a unique dialogue box before it gets into talking to its little pun. It'll be like, yes, and then it'll go into another dialogue box saying, I caught a lobster, isn't that a colobster? Every single other one of that same species you collect afterwards will no longer have that big yes dialogue box. So it's a great way to tell right off the bat of which creatures you caught are brand new. So you can be like, oh, okay, this is a new bug or fish, I should donate this one right away. Another tip is inside your Critterpedia itself, you can go through the list of a bunch of different bugs and fish. There will be a little owl icon next to the name of the bug or fish, indicating whether you've actually donated it to the museum or not. So it's a really great way to keep track of which bugs and fish you've donated to the museum already, so you can continue to make progress along there. How to catch tarantulas and scorpions. When you start the game, the biggest threat, it's not really a threat, but is the scorpions as well as the tarantulas on your island. They creep around and they can sting the player and make you get sent back to your home, but no need to be afraid. They're actually not too hard to catch once you know the trick. When you see a tarantula, all you'll do is you'll pull out your net, get about a good distance away from it, then hold the A button. Your villager will then creep along, holding the net, getting ready to swing. Once the tarantula notices you're there, it'll turn to face you and will get up on its hind legs, warning you off. Essentially, what you need to do is every time it gets up on its hind legs, you need to stop moving. It's kind of like a red light, green light, where every time he moves back down, you creep forward. Once he gets back on his hind legs, you wait a second, right, for him to screech at you, and then you can continue to make your way once he goes back down. The tarantula or scorpion will never charge at you unless you're moving while it's up on its hind legs, so you kind of just give it a second, walk, and you can easily get to the correct position you're going to need to catch that elusive tarantula. How to catch really fast diving fish. There's a wide variety of different creatures you can catch using the diving suit. Some that are stationary, don't move at all, some that swim around, but the ones that are really rare and worth a lot of bells are the really fast ones that are super hard to catch. You could just kind of chase it all the way to one of the corners in the ocean, try to corner it in its spot, but that takes a lot of work. The best technique to be catching these really fast diving fish is instead of mashing A to swim, just push forward on the control stick and tread water to make your way towards the bubbles of where that fish is. Then, once you're right on top of the creature, that's when you dive down. So then you'll dive down right on top of it and should be able to catch it right away. Otherwise, these really fast diving suit fish are really difficult to capture, so using this trick makes it a lot easier. Befriend Sable at the Able Sisters. There are two porcupines that work the Able Sisters shop, Mabel and Sable. Mabel's the one you talk to to actually buy clothing, but then there's Sable off in the corner kind of just working at the sewing machine. So each day, make it an effort to go talk to Sable. As you do so, you'll warm up to her, you'll start becoming more friends, and as you do, you'll actually start to unlock a bunch of custom patterns that you can use to customize your furniture and stuff. There's a wide variety of a bunch of default patterns like stripes, plaid, polka dots, and other kind of patterns, so then you won't have to just fill up a ton of custom customization spots. All it takes is just talking to her every day for a little while, and she'll eventually start giving you these so you can use them in your customization projects. Refreshing tool durability. Especially at the beginning of the game, it's super annoying having to recraft new tools constantly as they're always breaking and stuff. You can always buy a new one, of course, but it does get a little annoying after a while continuing to buy or recraft new tools. One little trick though is if you actually take one of these tools to the crafting bench to customize it, it'll actually refresh the durability of the tool when you customize it. So you don't need to keep track of how many times you swing your shovel or how many fish you end up catching. Just every once in a while if you go and just recustomize it to a different color, it'll refresh the durability making it so you don't have to go back and craft a new one or have to go buy another one. Just make it a habit, like once a day or every other couple of days, just quickly customize and refresh all the durability of all your tools, so then you don't have to keep buying new ones constantly. How to unlock villager reactions. As you befriend your villagers on your island, after a while they'll start giving you the player reaction, stuff that you can do emotes with. Learning the emotes is based on your level of friendships with the villagers. Not only do villagers of a specific personality type have exclusive emotions to them, really what it takes is just befriending them, talking to them every day, giving them gifts and stuff, and after a while they'll continue to give you new emotes interactions to work with. But speaking of gifting villagers, be careful what you gift your villager. 
It's worth keeping in mind, whatever you gift your villager, they will wear it or use it. So if it's a new clothing, a t-shirt, or a funky looking hat, they're gonna wear it and they're gonna use it on your island. So if it's something really ugly that you don't want them to use, make sure not to give it as a gift. Same goes for furniture. They will put it up in their house, they'll display it proudly, and if you really like how their house looks now and you don't want to put some ugly looking fish or some weird piece of furniture that doesn't match, just be careful at what you gift your villagers. But giving gifts, of course, is one of the best ways to level up your friendship with your villagers. Your best bet is to give them something quite expensive, as well as wrapping it, because wrapping it gives a little bit extra points to friendship. And there's one simple trick that's really easy that meets all the criteria. Each day, your town spawns a bunch of free fossils that you can dig up and assess. And of course, after you've donated them all to the museum, there's really not much you can do with fossils besides just sell them and make some bells. An alternative, however, is if you actually wrap them and give them to villagers, not only is it considered a very expensive gift, so it ups their friendship a lot, but also fossils cannot be put in a villager's home. So you can gift them as many fossils as you want, and they won't mess up the inside of their house, they won't just fill it with a bunch of rocks and fossils, you can give them as many as you want, and it's a really great way to boost your friendship with your villagers, unlock a lot of different reactions, and even try to get their photograph, which is the reward for becoming max level friendship with one of your villagers. So that's it, that's a bunch of beginner tips that I have for you guys that I wish I had known when I first started the game. Like I said, if you have any beginner tips for any of the new fans that are now in the Animal Crossing community, definitely put them in the comments below. I really hope this video and the comment section is going to be a great resource for a bunch of new people who are now joining the community. Again, I want to say a big welcome to you all. We welcome you with open arms and we cannot wait to play with you and see all the amazing designs that you create on your island. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big awesome like, and if you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Animal Crossing New Horizons. As a reminder, we do stream this game every weekend at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on YouTube Live, that's both Saturdays and Sundays. Be sure to follow me over on my socials as well as join our community Discord, the link to that is in the description below. It's a great place to find friends to play Animal Crossing with, trade turnips and such, so I highly recommend you check it out. Thanks again guys so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!